Puede ser de la izquierda. Yo te voy a decir a Laura que me va a decir si hablo o no, ¿ya? Hello. What's up, Andre? Good morning. <laughs> I was like, okay, am I the only one here in black screen? I thought my, my, I thought my, my, my sound wasn't working for a minute. And like, I'm late, but dang. <laughs> Just two minutes. Where would it go? <laughs> Thank you for responding to me, brother. Morning, Dale. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Morning. I see Sogan. Dale, good morning, everybody. I'm not the only one that was late. I'm stupid computer every morning. It's always freaking like this. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, being out there in the dust all day. Yes, your man mess with me. Oh, yeah, you must have that problem because you got driving that stuff, dude. Dude, even with the doors shut, it still comes in. What doors? I mean, has like <laughs> <laughs> they slide. You guys just never see them. <laughs> There's a gap right there, but the door is big. Everything right in. I know, I know. Everything rides in. Bugs, people. <laughs> it don't matter. People too. Just jump on in on the road. Now, oh, man, tweakers come up with some funny stuff. Like if I put my stuff on your step while you drive it to the end of the road, like get the fuck out of my truck. Tweakers and shit. They're funny. They're entertaining. They don't have no concept. They just think that, okay, yeah, just hit me out, please. It's flavor. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. no, you can be a thief. You can get me in trouble. My job and all that shit. No, you man. Know, like, my boss may not like this. <laughs> Tweak your guts all over my, over, over my seats. <laughs> You can mow the lawn backwards at the same time. <laughs> at midnight with a flashlight. Tweak your guts everywhere. Tweak your guts in my seat. Tweak your Morning, Tom. Morning. What's up, peeps? Morning. 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 Happy Tuesday. I get to go to the dentist this afternoon. There ain't happy involved. <laughs> this is great. There will be if you get some laughing gas. He doesn't use it. Uh, you need a new dentist. <laughs> okay, write write these numbers down. Oh no. I need a pen. Oh my god. The type of type of class we gotta write in. <clears throat> <clears throat> hurry, Andre, hurry. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Four, nine, sixteen, eighteen. Four, nine, sixteen, eighteen. Thirty, two, seven, nine. Thirty. Two seven nine. I just started writing names down when I got back. So, Andre, yes, you were first one I wrote down. You were in the upper left. <laughs> so, do you want to do your third affirmative on the fourth, ninth, sixteenth, or eighteenth? Ooh, eighteen. Let's go. And your fourth affirmative on the 30th, 2nd, 7th, or 9th? The 2nd. Nice, Cisa. I'll go on the 18th and the 7th. Affirmative. 
Fernando. I won the 16th in the second. Okay. Raphael. I won the 18th and the uh, 30th. Okay. Jack. 18 and 27. 18 and 27. The 18th and the 7th or the 2nd? 18 and 27. There is no 27. Oh, and the 7. Okay. Amber. I'll do the 16th and the 9th. Dale. Can I do the fourth and the ninth? Do you want to go on the last day? Is the, is the ninth the last day? Yeah. Oh, of December or? Yeah. November? Oh, I was thinking November. No, four, nine, 16, and 18 are all November. The 30th is November, and then second, seven, nine is December. Oh, okay. Um, give me the 16th and 18th. You can't, that's both on the third thing. 16th oh, and 18th. Third thing? Yeah. 4, 9, 16, 18 is the third one. 32, 7, 9 is the last one. Oh, you're doing 18th and 30th. <laughs> Spencer. Uh, which dates were for the fourth one again? The second, seven, and nine? And 30. And 30. Okay. Uh, can I get the four and second then? Okay. <laughs> Did I miss anybody? Me. Miguel Samano. I do the 16th and the 9th? Okay. You ready to flow? You got your sheets out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, bless you. Hmm? Yeah, we got rid of all the smoke yesterday and got all the Central Valley dirt. I was running circles around Valley Fever all day. You ready? Yes. Okay. Andre's going to call the number. So, I'm, my name's Sochi. Hey, Sochi. Hi, Sochi. Uh, all children should attend Head Start is my proposition. By children between three and four years old and Head Start's federal program to prepare children for success. I will contend early childhood education can give children a jump start to success. My first proof from an excellent source says Head Start children make small but significant gains on a variety of measures, including their pre reading skills, working on behavior problems and compared with non-Head Start children. My second proof from an excellent source says Head Start children socialize with others, solve problems, and have other experiences that help them become more self-confident. My last proof from an excellent source says children leaving Head Start programs are more prepared for kindergarten they're excited about learning and they're ready to succeed. Now open for cross X. Yay. Yay. Andre, give me a number. Uh, 16. 
Give me a number that I can fucking do when only there's, there's nine people here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to record. Uh, uh, what? what? Number one. Number Recording one. in progress. Spencer. Hello. Anyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Uh, you did not meet your prima facie requirements. You only have one contention, and it's too late to add the other one now. Uh, okay. Your proposition was all kids should attend Head Start. Yep. And you defined uh, Head Start and children. Mm-hmm. Uh, Intention was jump start. Uh, it, it like gives them like an event. It like puts them ahead. I don't remember. Exactly. It's a jump start to success. Oh, okay. Uh, for proof one, do you have any proof for that? It's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal evidence. And also, I only see two benefits. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a hasty generalization. It's a form of the logic, and I don't accept the logical. I need to, yeah, uh, proof. And my notes closed. I don't know why. Okay, proof two. Two, is there any evidence for that? That's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal evidence. And I'm just going to take this. Uh, does Jumpstart always cause these benefits? Head start. Yes. Head start? Oh. Uh, does the, the, first, the first question is, does it cause it? Always is the second one. That's my mistake. Uh, does Jumpstart cause head start. These ben- head start cause these benefits? <laughs> yes. Does Jumpstart cause these benefits all the time? No, because it's Head Start. <laughs> what percentage of the time does Head Start cause these benefits? No. Uh, <laughs> you don't know? No. Uh, are there any other causes for these benefits? To Head Start. Yeah, you could get a jump start and head start. Because <laughs> uh, you have not ruled out alternate causality, I do not accept your proof. Good. Give me a number. Uh, four. Dale. For the record, head start works. I went to a head start. Okay, that ain't saying much, Andre. <laughs> Dale. Yes, sir. Three. Uh, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. Well, it's anecdotal, and I do not accept anecdotal proof. Yeah. So, does going to Head Start cause these benefits all the time? That's question two. Oh. Does going to Head Start cause these? That's A is cause B, causation, right? Yeah. Cause benefits. Oh. Does going to Head Start cause these benefits? Yes. Does it cause these benefits all the time? No. What percentage of the time does it cause these benefits? Depends on how many brats you have in the class. Are there any other causes for these benefits? Drugs. All right. Because you have not ruled out alternative causality, I cannot accept your proof. Good. You're going to start us out on this one. My name's Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Say so, My proposition. Parents should be less authoritarian. Parents, I mean anyone with a kid. By authoritarian, I mean stop uh, strict parenting and enforcing strict obedience. By less authoritarian, I mean simply let the child express themselves and have their own mind. My contention, authoritarian parenting can have negative outcomes. My first proof from an excellent source says strict parenting deprives kids of the opportunity to internal internalize self-discipline responsibility. 
Instead, they have tendencies towards anger and depression, which results in them becoming more rebellious. Proof two, from an excellent source, strict parenting can influence teens to binge drink, can also cause them to have low self-esteem, to be anxious, and to be depressed. They are less willing to confess bad behavior to parents as well. And my third proof from an excellent source says, parents think that being strict will protect their kids and teach them morals, but what it really does is it teaches them how to lie. A lot of teens confess to having lied about where they're going, who they're going to be with, and what they're going to be doing to their parents, especially if their parents wouldn't approve of it. Now open for cross X. Yeah. <clears throat> the affirmative is not met their prima facie responsibility by giving, by giving us two contingents with three proofs each, and they have run out of time to add it. Work. You good? Yeah. Ooh, what? All right. Go to, go to the prop. You propose parents should be less authoritarian. You define parents mm -hmm. and authoritarian. You contend that authoritarian parents, uh, parenting, uh, negative outcomes. Are you going to accept that proposition? Uh, should I not? Does it <laughs> ask for a change? No, no, it doesn't. Are there parents out there that are less authoritarian and their little shit brat kids are running around all over yeah, the place? Yeah, there is. Yeah. All right. So why, you know, I'm a little lost on where I go in this direction for not accepting your proposition. The proposition doesn't ask for a change. Therefore, it's the supporting the status quo, and I thank them. But Tom's going okay. to make me rip them up anyway. <laughs> the proposition doesn't ask for support or change, so it maintains a status quo, but Tom's going to ask me to rip them up anyways. That's it. All right. You're on the contention. You know, you can stand that authoritarian parenting, you know, develops negative outcomes. Yep. Do you have any proof for that? For what? Can you prove it? <clears throat> I gave you three proofs. All right. Well, proof one. Mm-hmm. Seems like you're coming to a, a big conclusion What's, on limited. No, no, evidence. you gotta ask that question. Do you have any proof for proof one? It's what they said. Uh, it's a hasty generalization. No, that's you, anecdotal. It's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Mm -hmm. So it's a hasty oh. generalization. You only give me two two benefits. One, two, three, four, five negative no, outcomes. Two check marks. Yeah. You All missed right. the last one, rebellion. rebellion. Anger, depression, and rebellion. That's good right there. I caused one, but that thing, yeah. And I have all that on proof two, though. When I put proof one deprives opportunity, tendency towards anger, and then dot, dot, dot. Anger, depression, and more rebelliousness. Okay. <clears throat> well, does that cause V? Does a uh, does this cause these negative outcomes? Yes. Does it, say, does it cause these outcomes all the time? No. What percent does it cause these outcomes? Well, sometimes they kill their parents. So, Ooh. are there other causes <laughs> for these outcomes? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> because you've not ruled out alternative causality, I cannot accept your proof. Give me a number. Uh, seven. Six, seven. Andre. Knew it. I freaking knew it. Proof two. Did they get any proof? That's what they said. Does these benefits does uh, Do you accept anecdotal proof? That's right. That's what they said. Oh, uh, that's anecdotal and do not accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Now going for the Ufer. Mm -hmm. Does uh, less authority parents, right? Uh, cause the benefits, cause benefits? Well, no, it's strict parenting strict. causes these negative. 
Does sharing cause the negative benefits? Yes. Does it cause benefits all the time? These harms? No. These harms? Yeah. What percentage of time does it cause these harms? I have no idea. Are there any other causes for these harms? Television. Mm -hmm. And video games. Mm -hmm. Because you have not ruled out alternative causality, I do not accept your proof. Proof three. Okay. Did they give any proof? That's what they said. That's Andrew, Andrew, that's Andrew the proof. Does I'm going to say this again. Does, does uh, Chief Harrington cause his harms? The harm of lying? No. Does Chief Harrington cause his harms all the time? Yeah. Kids lie. So when they actually, yeah. What percent of the time does these calls call these kids? All the time. Uh, all the time? Mm hmm. Are there any other causes for these harms? Nope. Because Unless they you, become Republicans. Because you have not ruled out alternative causality. Do not have your proof. How many things are in this proof? Three. I wrote three down. Only one? Can you repeat Lying. It teaches them how to lie. A lot of teens confess to having lied about where they're going, what they're going to be doing and anything else their parents wouldn't approve of. All that's just talking about lying. One thing? One oh. thing. Got me there. Okay, but that's yeah, the thing I to watch for. Checks on that one. Because they say things like, uh, this helps to create um, happiness. And when you're happy, this happens, this happens, and this happens. How many things are they talking about? Happiness. Happiness. Yeah. You just define the different degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got right. That was a good one to slip in there. Yeah. Thank you. I'll write them and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, just to make sure, I oh shit, I never did do that, did I? Oh yeah, we're recording. You're recording. So um, I got on Deja back this morning. Since they changed the voice, it's thrown me. So. This meeting is being recorded, and now it's a whole different voice and a different message. My computer is still frozen. Look at this ratchetness. <laughs> Got to get you a Mac, man. I know. All right. I say from an excellent source, you can't say that. I just wanted to make sure that that's out there. You got Dr. Joe Bob Brown, an epidemiologist, was quoted as saying this. Okay, whatever, you are going to give us an expert. I just don't want, I want you to look at the other oofers available besides inappropriate authority, because all of these are damn inappropriate authorities. So I'm just covering that by saying they're an excellent source. Okay. So my proposition, oh, I'm Sabrina. Hi, Hello, Sabrina. Sabrina. What's up? Uh, my proposition is everyone should use tanning beds. Definitions, anybody who cares about the health of their skin and tanning beds are tanning salons are at tanning salons, which contain UV rays from light bulbs to produce a cosmetic tan. I will contend tanning beds have numerous benefits. My first proof from an excellent source says lupus vulgaris is tuberculosis of the skin. It produces large ulcers on the face and neck, which are difficult to cure and often lead, leave bad scars. A Danish doctor developed a UVB lamp that was so successful in curing the disease is that it won him the Nobel Prize. My second proof from an excellent source says UV radiation is essential to the body in order to stimulate vitamin D production. Vitamin D increases calcium and phosphorus absorption from food and plays a crucial role in skeletal development, immune function, and blood cell formation. And my last proof from an excellent source says, <clears throat> excuse me, UV rays stimulate the body enough in three sessions a week for five to 15 minutes 
to keep vitamin D levels normal and to prevent vitamin D deficiency problems such as rickets. I'm now open for cross X. Yay. Andre, mm. give me a number. Uh, five. Amber. Okay. Um, so, do you want me to repeat like your proposition, definition, and contention? Not at all. After you do something else. Mm. Or do you just want me to start off with the groups? You start at the beginning. Okay. And the uh, beginning is telling me something. Your proposition? No. Did he meet his responsibilities? No. Your prima facie? Yeah, that's what you point out right away. Immediately. Um, okay, you did not meet the prima facie because responsibility. Responsibilities because you need a second contention and three more proofs. And and it's too late to add it now. There you go. Now you go to the proposition. Okay. Your proposition is everyone should use tanning beds. Yep. You find everyone and tanning beds. Yep. Your contention was tanning beds have um, ha have hundreds of benefits. Numerous benefits. Numerous benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and did they give us any proof? For what? That's what they said? No. You, I asked you for what? I gave you three proofs. You got to tell me where you are. Oh, uh, proof one. Okay, for proof one, did they give us any proof? Is that what you meant? Yes. Okay, uh, that's what they said. Um, that's any total, and I do not accept any total proofs. Okay. Um, proof one is a hasty generalization. Because you know, only gave us two proofs, and I only gave you one. Oh, I have two. Um, and <clears throat> it's not limited on evidence, so um, that's a form of illogic, and I do not accept an illogic. Good, proof two. Um. Two is. Did they get most any proof? <laughs> I'm nervous. Why? I'm, I'm nervous. Nervous. Yeah, we're all we're all rookies too. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> two proof two. Oh. Did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I do not accept anecdotal proofs. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also a hasty generalization because you did not give us any proof. Give you, one. proof. you did not give us an, enough proof. Okay. Um, and that's a form of illogic, and I do not accept illogical proofs. There you go. All you got to do is talk faster, and you got it. Give, give me a number, Amber. Um, three. Fernando, pick up this one, please. <clears throat> you in there, Fernando? Yeah, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Proof three. Well, honestly, I just got home right now because I want to go take my sister to school. Okay. But, um, I, Narciso, I Narciso, please. For proof three, do they give us any proof? It's what they said. That is anecdotal and I do not accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Um, 
You reach the mutation party to keep on. Does you be stimulation body to keep on? Does uh, because your proof does not link back to your contention, it is a, a, a logic, and I do not accept the logical proof. The logic is it. It, it doesn't link. It's a taking the, the question. Okay, because the contention said it has numerous benefits, and they only gave us one. So you could have gone ACG hey, or begging the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, my name's Mandy. <clears throat> hey, Mandy. Hey, Mandy. What's up? Uh, proposition: All professional sports organizations should implement a zero tolerance policy. By professional sports, where people are paid to play kids' games. And zero tolerance policy that their eligibility to play will be revoked if convicted of physical assault towards a spouse, child, or partner. I will contend domestic violence is a growing problem among professional athletes. My first proof from an excellent source says across professional sports, it's hardly unusual for athletes to be involved in domestic abuse cases, but seldom have they faced meaningful punishment from their employers. My second proof from an excellent source says, looking more broadly at the whole question of crime within the NFL, we did criminal background checks on over 500 players, which was about a third, oh, excuse me, a third of the league at the time. It was completely random. Of those 500, 21% of them had a record for serious crime. And the most prominent crime was domestic violence. And my third proof from an excellent source, Domestic violence now seems to be the football league's number one off-field issue. I'm open for cross X, Narciso. Yay. 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 Okay. Uh, you have not made your prima facie responsibilities because you only you did not give us a second contention and three more proofs, and it is too late to add it now. Good. Okay, Google. Your proposition Turn was that TV. All, all right, turning the Google TV leagues should implement a zero tolerance policy. Yeah, all professional sports. Mm -hmm. All professional sports leagues should implement a zero tolerance policy. Mm -hmm. And your contention was uh, domestic violence is a growing issue amongst them. Mm -hmm. Put down. Uh, your for your first proof did they give us any proof that's what they said that is anecdotal and i do not accept anecdotal proof okay um for your first proof you only gave us two source two forms of evidence and uh that is a form uh that is Begging the, I mean, that is a hasty generalization, and that is a form of illogic, and I do not accept the logical proof. I actually only gave you one, but you know. All right. Okay, Fernando, yeah. take over. <clears throat> um. Proof two. Are you talking because we can't hear you? Oh, I'm looking at no. He's me or somebody else? It's Fernando. Oh, okay. 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 But if he doesn't say anything, you can take over, Jack. Uh, okay. Is proof three or proof two? Proof two. Okay. 
Um, so you say it on proof too that it need to be background checks because many many professionals are accused of domestic violence. Yeah, uh, 21% they, of them in the NFL, the most prominent crime was domestic violence, yes. Did they give us any proof? Is what they said. That's an ignoral, and I do not accept an ignoral proofs. Mm -hmm. mm, let's see. Um, yeah. Hoover. He's begging the question. Why? Because it doesn't link to the contention. Okay. Um, that is, which is a form of illogic, and I do not accept illogical proofs. Good. The other oofer is hasty generalization, obviously, talking only about the NFL. I just okay. put a repeated contention in the note. That was the first one. That was the first one? Yeah. Jack, proof three. Okay. Um, so, on proof three... I do I do not can write it so I'm I'm just uh, did they give us any proof? It's what they said. That's an ignoral and I do not ask an ignoral proof. Um that is has to oh wait. Um uh, let's see. Uh, that is hostile generalization because it's coming to a big conclusion. That's the that's the definition. Why is this proof a hasty generalization? Because they give us only one evidence. That's it. And that is which is a form of illogic, and I do not accept in illogical proof. That's it. Good. Did we do the teachers let their kids use the bathroom one? I no. Think so. Okay, my name's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. So, proposition all K-8 school teachers should allow their students to use the restroom when needed. By K-8, I mean elementary and middle school. By using the restroom, I mean responding to our body's way of releasing waste. You can also eat cashews, that helps. Cashews, that helps? Yeah, a lot of fiber. Oh, yeah, of course. Fiber during diet, it trips you out. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice way of saying somebody's full of shit. You just look at them and go, you need more fiber in your diet. <laughs> <laughs> that's asking for a right hook. <laughs> My contention, students are negatively affected by not being able to go to the bathroom. My first proof from an excellent source says, urologists worry that kids are forced to hold it, suffer the consequences, which include, but is, are not limited to, getting urinary tract infections or damaged kidneys. My second proof from an excellent source says, 30% of students affected by not being able to use the restroom, ex of those, some experience encopresis, which is the body's involuntary leaking of stool. And my last one from an excellent source says, Jamie Barkley, <clears throat> excuse me, sued her 10 year old daughter's school for implementing a rule limiting the amount of time students can go to the restroom, forcing them to hold it or lose points in class. Barkley said her daughter was forced to hold it after school, she took her to ER, and the x-ray showed she had a blockage of fecal matter up to her rib cage. I'm now open for cross X. Yay. Say one or two, somebody. Two. 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 Raphael. Uh, you did not meet the primary fascia requirements because you didn't list two contentions and you didn't include another three reasoning. Oh, I got it. Having kids hold well, their waste products. Can't time, you can't uh, yeah, you got to do that all together. One sentence. <laughs> okay, it's good. Go to the prop. Okay. Okay. Through A, students should be allowed 
to use the restroom? Or yeah, the teachers should allow him to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like the old days when we'd go in there and smoke cigarettes and shit. So. <laughs> you guys, your day used to have me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you well, got us, airplanes in too. You're they, the reason why. No. They got us to uh, a smoking area eventually in my junior year, so the bathrooms got cleaner. And why haven't you stopped me, Raphael? Hmm. You go, excuse me, my time. You put your hand out there. Say, excuse me, my time. Go ahead. Okay. Did you give us any proof? For what? For the for the contention or for your first Yeah, I gave you three proofs for the contention. You gotta for say for proof one did they give one. Yes. Did you give us any proof for proof one? Yeah, that's what they said. That's um anecdotal and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Mm -hmm. And Ufer. Do we move on to proof two or? Ufer. Oh, you got to do the Ufer. One other form of reasoning. It's a form of logic because you only gave us one proof? What the logic is that? What um, so what goes after? My class yesterday, people were chatting back and forth. Tasty, tasty, tasty G. Excuse me. Say it's a hasty generalization, Raphael, because yeah. I only gave you one thing. It's a hasty generalization because you only gave us one reason. And. And it's a form of a logic. And. And I don't accept the logical proof. There you go, do proof two. You state that 30% are affected by limited bathroom use? Yep. And they leak stool. <clears throat> Did you yep. give us the proof? What they said. That's a form of Anecdotal. That's a that's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Now the Uber. It's a hasty generalization. I don't accept. Why is it a hasty generalization, Raphael? Because you only gave us one. Uh, there proof. you go. Yep. And that's a form of logic, logic, and I don't accept logical proof. Okay, Miguel, take over. They give us any proof? That's what they said. And that's a form. No, that's that's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Okay. And then for that one, it's a hasty generalization. You only give us one proof. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of the logic, and I don't accept the logical proof. Okay, good. Hi, my name's Carla. Hey, hey Carla. What's up? All animal testing should be banned. By animal testing, I mean essay or multiple guests should, no. By animal testing, I mean where an animal is forced to undergo something that is likely to cause them pain, suffering, distress, or lasting harm. By ban forbidden by law. My contention is animal testing is inhumane. My first proof from an excellent source said that the regulatory group CPC SEA inspected 467 laboratories and all of them revealed sick and dying animals left with no care, including those that had been blinded, mutilated, or were suffering from open wounds. My second proof comes from an excellent source who says, Experimenting on animals for research is inhumane. The experiments include infecting animals with disease and poisons for toxicity and even genetic modifications. The animals don't receive pain meds so that leads to un underreported pain and suffering. 
And my final proof comes from an excellent source that says Dye Sport, which is a corporation that makes anti-wrinkle treatments, tests their material on mice, which are injected to determine the d dose, which kills 50% of them. That is the DRAES 50 test. The mice will experience nausea, muscle paralysis, leading to severe distress as they slowly suffocate to death over the course of a three or four day procedure. Now open for cross X. Yeah. Miguel. <laughs> Leaking stool. Only two of us excited. Yeah. Miguel, start yeah. us out. You haven't met your primal facial responsibility because you missed your second contention and three proofs, and it's too late to add enough. Mm -hmm. Um. Then your prop was all animal testing should be banned. Yep. The contention was that animal and testing. defined animal oh, testing yeah, and banned. Key terms and your contention was that animal testing is inhumane. Yep. For proof one, did they give us any proof? It's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Okay. Do. Does animal testing Genius. cause? Yeah. <laughs> um, what is Is animal is animal testing inhumane? Yeah. No, how would I phrase, does A cause B? How would I? Does animal testing cause these oh, problems? These problems? Yeah. Does, does it cause them all the time? Not with multiple choice tests, no. What percent of the time does animal testing cause these problems? No idea. Are there any other causes for for these harms? For these harms? Yeah, do you eat meat? Because you have not ruled out ethnic reality, <laughs> I cannot accept your food. Okay. Man, for proof two, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Then you also give us three proof for that. So... Does... Does animal testing cause these problems? Yep. Does animal testing cause these problems all the time? Nope. What percent of the time does animal testing cause these problems? Don't know. Are there any other causes for animal testing? For these problems? For these problems? Yes. Because you have not ruled out alternative causality, I cannot accept your proof. Okay, Fernando, you ready? Yeah. Proof three. For proof three, do you have any proofs? It's what they said. And that is uh, that's anecdotal, and I do not accept anecdotal proof. Okay. Um, hasty, is that hasty, um, hasty generalization? No, what comes next? Why is it a hasty generalization? Uh, cause you only gave. Well, that's uh, um. Yeah, I mean, it's not like a form of of logic. It's a hasty generalization, yes. But why is it a hasty generalization? How many things did I give you? Oh, uh, can leave me one. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that makes it a hasty generalization, which is. Form, it's a form of a logic, and I do not accept the logical proof. Okay. Hey, my name is Miguel. 
Hey, Miguel. Hey, Miguel. What's up? Uh, my proposition is people should exercise more. By people, I mean human beings and exercise, cardiovascular strength workout, and by more, three to four times a week. My contention, exercising is good for humans. My first proof, it decreases the feelings of depression and makes you feel happiness. By the way, that came from an excellent source. My second proof from an excellent source says, exercising improves sleep and helps you fall asleep faster. And my final proof from an excellent source says, exercise builds strength and confidence. Now open for cross X. Yay. Fernando. Any questions? Um. Do you have your sheet in front of you? Yes. Do you see the part about where you got to check to see if it met prima facie, a good prop and good prop contention link? Yeah. Well, did it? <laughs> no. No. Did not. So I didn't meet my prima facie responsibility by providing a second contention, and it's too late to add it now. Okay. You're, not, you're okay. Say that. Hey, back. So. Did I have a good prop? No, I didn't. I didn't ask for a change. So no. I'm the status quo. I'm the status quo. Yeah. And so Tom's going to make me rip them up anyway. Now you go to the proposition. Okay, so what's your prop? I tried to get it in before your alarm there, Dale. But people aren't playing the game correctly. <laughs> it's okay. okay. What was my proposition, Fernando? Was it? Can you repeat it? No. You got to get more of your head into the game here, okay? And because we don't have time to dick around, Dale, go. All right. <clears throat> because the affirmative has not met their prima facie responsibility, you know, it, it's too late to add it now. It, but by the prima facie, they didn't meet their prima facie responsibility by not having. Uh, two contentions with three proofs each, but it's too late to add it now. And Tom's going to make me rip up anyways. Why? You you define people and... The proposition supports the status quo. Oh, the proposition supports the status quo and it does not ask for a change, so I thank you. But Tom's going to make me But Tom's going to make me rip you up anyways. Yes. So you contend that exercise is good for humans. And proof one, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I do not accept anecdotal proof. You only gave me two two evidences, and that's a hasty generalization, which is a form of a logic, and I don't accept the logical proof. Proof two. Proof two. Did they give us any proof? That's what they said. All right, that's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. They only gave us two definitions, and that one as well, which is, again, a form of hasty generalization, which is a form of a logical proof, and I do not accept the logical proof. Finish it. And for proof three, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That's anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. And then once again, they only gave us two definitions, and it's another form of hasty generalization, and I do not accept. It's a form of a logic, and I do not accept the logical proof. Good. Yay. All right. Got to go, guys. Have See a good one. Drive safe. Oh, well. Amber. Um, for the excellent source, because you said that we're not supposed to have an excellent source, we're supposed to, um, 
Right, but this is just practice, and none of these practice ones have excellent sources. So everyone's going to be an inappropriate authority, which is too damn easy. Um, when would we use analogy or authority? Analogy is when something is saying it's similar to something else. And authority is when, like in this one, uh, Kathleen Zellman gave six reasons to drink water from WebMD. And you could ask, is Kathy Zellman an expert? That's the authority question. And if I say no or I don't know, it becomes an inappropriate authority, which is a form of logic, and we don't accept a logical proof. Otherwise, if what the source, don't care how excellent they are, if what they say is stupid, you rip up what they say. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, my name is Miguel again. I'm Miguel. My proposition, sure. people should drink more water. By people, I mean people all over the world. By drink is the action of swallowing fluids and water. I'm in talking about H2O. My contention, drinking more water has positive effects on the human body. My first proof, it helps prevent headaches from an excellent source. My second proof from an excellent source says it boosts the immune system. And my third proof from an excellent source says water helps keep the skin looking. Who wants it? You have not met your parents' responsibilities because you need a contention, another contention entry proof, so, and it's too late to add it now. Okay. Your proposition is everyone should drink water. Mm -hmm. The definition is uh, people and drink and water. Mm -hmm. Your contention is drinking more water is beneficial or? Yes. Okay. And for proof one, did they give us any proof? It's what they said. That's anecdotal and I do not accept anecdotal proofs. Okay. Um, it is a form of hasty generalization because you only gave us one proof. Mm -hmm. And that's a form of illogic and I do not accept illogical proofs. Okay. Proof two. Proof two is, did they give us any proof? It's what they said. That's anecdotal and I do not accept anecdotal proofs. Okay. Um, it is also a hasty generalization because you gave us one proof. Um, and I do not accept the logic. It is a form of logic and I do not accept the logical proofs. Proof three. Um, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That's anecdotal and I do not accept anecdotal proofs. Mm -hmm. um, it is also a form of hasty generalization. Because no, it isn't. No? Yeah. It said water helps keep the skin looking. So uh, what a logic is that? Um, begging the question. Because? Because it does not link to the contention. Okay. So it is a form of a logic and I do not accept the logical proofs. Good, because what you did was what everybody else did. They are added skin looking good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but adding it just says skin looking. That's all it says. Skin looking. It ends right there. Okay, good. My name's Brianne. And uh, Amber asked earlier when we stop practicing, we're going to be doing this until we start the third affirmative on the fourth. So watch the other class recording. You can practice flowing, you can hear, because the same thing happened yesterday. People are, they're like, what the fuck? Okay, so it's like, no, nah, we've done this over and over and over already. You should know what the hell to expect. So watch the other recording in there, okay? And flow, and then figure out the reasoning before somebody rips it up. Uh, my name is Brianne. Hi, Brianne. What's up? My proposition, all kids should attend preschool. 
By preschool, I mean a place where children learn who aren't old enough for kindergarten. And by kids, two to five. My contention, preschool is beneficial for children. My first proof, preschool prepares kids for kindergarten, promotes social development, promotes emotional development, promotes language skills, and promotes cognitive skills. That came from an excellent source. My second proof from an excellent source says, preschool helps socialize children with other kids their age, they learn how to count, they learn how to do the alphabet, and teachers have, er, have training in early childhood education. And third proof from an excellent source, children who went to preschool uh, had better test scores, it lowered their chance of being held back a grade, and a few number of children with special education placements I'm now open for cross X. Ooh. Yay. Yay. Thanks. Who wants it? Anybody go, go, go. Uh, I see so. Who? You have not made prima facie responsibilities because you only had uh, one contention and uh, three proofs, and it's too late to add the other contention and the other three proofs now. Good. Uh, your proposition was all kids should attend preschool. Yep. You defined, uh, kids and preschool. Mm -hmm. uh, your your contention was uh, preschool is beneficial for children. Yep. Uh, and your first proof uh, does preschool cause the, these benefits? Oh, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. That is uh, anecdotal, and I don't accept anecdotal proof. Uh, and for does uh, going to preschool cause these benefits? Yep. Does it cause these benefits all the time? Nope. What percent of the time does it cause these benefits? Don't know. Uh, is there any other reason for these benefits? Parental involvement among them, yes. Okay, because you have not ruled out alternate causality, I cannot accept your proof. Good, proof two. For proof two, did they give us any proof? That's what they said. Uh, that is anecdotal, and I do not accept anecdotal proof. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, does going to preschool uh, help or cause these ben the three benefits? Yes. Does it cause those three benefits all the time? No. What percent of the time does it cause these benefits? I don't know. Are there any other causes for these benefits? Like parental involvement? Yes. Okay. Because you have not ruled out alternative causality, I cannot accept your proof. Good. Andre, you got stepped down there, so take proof three. Okay. Did you get any proof? That's what they said. It's the end of the, the, end of the proof. Okay. Uh, for proof three, did it give us, did it give us, does it cause these benefits? Yes. Does it cause benefits all the time? No. What percent of the time does it cause these benefits? I don't know. Are there any causes for these benefits? Yes. Because you have no rule of alternative causality, I do not set your proof. Okay, what was the quicker way to get this one ripped up? Uh. You had a, a bad prop? No. Children who went to preschool got better test scores. They lowered their chance of being held back a grade and a few number of children with special education play placements. You didn't link. That didn't last, now that last one doesn't link, so it leaves me with two benefits. HCG. ACG. I thought it was right. two. I thought it was two. I, I wasn't sure. I thought it was yeah. two. Oh, yeah, because the other one, again, finish your damn sentences. <laughs> okay. So watch the recordings. Have your flow sheets available. And practice, practice, practice. Yeah. We still have a couple of weeks before we have to do this for real. So you'll be back here next Tuesday. Yes, Narciso. Are we doing better than the other class, or? 
No, you guys suck. Oh man. <laughs> he would tell us if we were. He wouldn't tell us if we were. No. We're not presenting our third affirmative, the 18th of this month. For you. Or the, are, you, are you talking about 18th? Of, 18th, I got the 18th. 18th of November. Oh, oh, I thought it was this month. Yeah, we start, we start the third affirmatives on the 4th of November. Oh. And so far, I only have one A student who's going on that fourth date. Right, Spence? There was one other guy. No, Dale moved. Oh. Mm -hmm. I had a question about how long are the is the class going to be like split Tuesday, until the fourth uh, ball for the rest of the semester. We're going to be split Tuesday, Thursday until the fourth. And then only the people scheduled to go on the fourth show up. Everybody else watches the recording. Okay. Oh, so only the people scheduled to do the, their uh, thing on the yeah. fourth go that day. Yep. Nobody else has to go to class. You have to watch the recording. Okay. But, but we don't have to be there. No, yeah, because as you can see, we're doing better with stomping out Zoom issues, the smaller the class size. So I don't want things freezing up when you have to do a cross X. Can I, can I, can I change my uh, date for the first affirmative? For sure. The third, I mean, for the third? To the what? Uh, I'm going to change it to the fourth, next Spencer. Narciso is now with Spencer. Good. November 4th. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. I thought it was uh, October 18th. October 18th, not oh, November. Oh well, we've already missed out on October 4th and 9th. <laughs> so yeah, it's November. Good. Get your third affirmative done. I've looked at a few. They're turning out pretty good. So get it done. And then all you got, then you start on the fourth one. So all you got to worry about for the rest of the semester is doing your two cross X's. Okay. Good. Go out and enjoy, peeps. Bye right. bye. As you were, sailor. Recording stopped. <laughs> Carry on. Have a day.